Chapter 25 Davy's Absence Wilhelm disappeared for a couple of hours, then showed up again around midnight, bringing with him a stolen climbing harness. Benjamin, he explained, lacked the sheer guts to handle the kind of underside climb Wilhelm's bravado was designed for. Instead, they affixed a pulley rope to the leg of Benjamin's bed and lowered the pulley out through the window. Benjamin went first, with Wilhelm holding the rope secure. With his feet in a brace, Benjamin tugged on a central rope to lower himself to the ground. Despite the horrors of the afternoon, it proved far quicker to get down to the lobby by going around the school's outer wall to the main entrance, rather than cutting through the school itself. All afternoon, Benjamin had watched cleaners spraying chamomile on the ground outside. But now, while he waited for Wilhelm to descend, the pungent scent of the calming flower thick in his nostrils, Benjamin stood nervously back by the wall, trying not to imagine more ghouls climbing up out of the ground. Wilhelm hopped down from the rope, making Benjamin jump. His friend was like a mouse, utterly silent. Here, wipe this on you. Just a bit on your clothes is enough. I didn't want to do it in the room because the teachers might smell it. Benjamin dipped his fingers into a pot of thick grease. What is it? He asked, wrinkling his nose. Hawlock repellent. Benjamin didn't have a chance to ask what it was or who had figured out it repelled the reanimated refuse sacks. Wilhelm was already running along the base of the wall heading toward the lighter sky that indicated the cliff top. Benjamin glanced warily back toward the area of upland where the ghouls had come from, then hurried to catch up. By the time he had reached the main doors, Wilhelm was already inside, bent low beside the grass, watching for signs of activity. The lobby, though, was empty as always. The office, too, was silent and dark. I need to get inside, Benjamin said. Wilhelm winked. I thought you might. Since that first night, Benjamin had tried twice to get into the admissions office, but both times he had found the door locked. Mrs Martin had perhaps wised up that someone had been inside, but Wilhelm, with his seemingly endless inventory of shady skills, had the door open in no time. A wooden knitting needle that had aided him secreted back into a pocket. Wait here, Benjamin said. I won't be long. The phone was in its old place on the desk. He picked up the receiver and hearing the dialing tone, bent to dial the numbers. When he paused. What was his phone number again? He remembered the code in the first three digits, but the last four... His father had taught him the number when Benjamin was three. It had never changed, but he had forgotten it completely until his parents had instilled it into his mind in the form of a code. Zero. That was where everything started, at the bottom of the tree. Seventeen. The number of the house directly across the street. Three. The number of trees in number seventeen's garden. And then double two the number of trees in the gardens on either side of theirs. Four, the number of wheels on Daddy's car. Three, the number of wheels on Benjamin's tricycle. Ninety-two, Grandma's age. He knew now Dad had made it up, but Grandma had forever after been ninety-two and would likely remain that age. And the last two digits, which were thirteen. Why? Like the rest, there was a reason, but it was gone now and would likely stay gone. He shook his head as he dialed them, knowing that he would need to write them down or he would forget. The phone rang. His mother answered. Hi. Putting on a fake child's voice hurt him more than he anticipated. He grimaced as he said, Is Davy there? It's Kyle from Davy's class at school. Can he come over to play? Kyle was a made-up name, one he hoped wouldn't make his mother suspicious. His mother was an intensely private person. She wouldn't give out details over the phone to an adult, 
but perhaps a child might break through her defences. Hi, Kyle. Don't you know what time it is? Benjamin nodded against the phone. He sniffed. Yep, I do. I just want Davy to come over. Benjamin's mother sighed. Kyle, I know, love. I wish I could promise David could go over tomorrow, but I'm afraid David isn't here right now. He's still in the hospital. Benjamin gulped. His cheeks flushed, and he had to swallow down a sob. When will he come home? Again his mother sighed. I don't know, love. He's having a long sleep, but I'm hopeful that he'll wake up soon. Part of Benjamin's master plan had been to fake being upset, but now he realised he truly was. And not just because he was stuck in a dark office, speaking to his mother down a phone line that might as well go to another world, but because he knew from his mother's answers that his theory was right. I miss Davy, Benjamin, as Kyle whispered. I miss David too, his mother answered but I haven't given up hope that both of my boys will be back home and playing together before we all know it. You get off to bed now, Kyle. Sweet dreams, honey. Mum! Benjamin gritted his teeth to stop himself from crying out for her as the line went dead. He put the phone gently back into its cradle, then wiped away his tears with the sleeve of his nightclothes. A long sleep. Benjamin nodded. His mother had used the kind of phrase an adult might on a little kid to hide a serious sickness. Benjamin wasn't stupid though. He knew what she meant. David was lying in a hospital bed somewhere, in a coma. Something had happened to him, too. Chapter 27 Rescue plans. You don't have to worry about Godfrey, Moto said. We are quite well in control of who comes down here and who doesn't. He will find the floor free of any secret doors, and your disappearance will be a mystery. There's so much I don't understand. Why are all these rooms shut off? There must be more rooms here than in the rest of the school. Moto's head wheel spun, his jaw sliding from side to side in what Benjamin assumed was a gesture of amusement. More years ago than most can remember, this school was founded by men seeking to create a safe haven for those unfortunates who found themselves marooned here, to nurture and protect them from the ghouls and worse. This they did to a certain level of success but there were never enough of them to control as they would like. As always, when humans are involved, wars were fought, alliances formed and broken. Over time, a general truce was struck that survives to this day. We allow them their section of the school, and in turn, they allow us ours. The teachers know you're here. Moto's head spun again. Of course. Though perhaps those who command here now are a little unfamiliar with us as a whole. We, of course, have the capacity to far outlive them, and quite possibly the world itself, although no one can be sure yet, for obvious reasons. Benjamin's head spun worse than Moto's front wheel in his expression of a nod. I don't understand anything about this place, he said. All I know is that I'm here, and that back in England, something has happened to my brother. Your brother? How would you know? Benjamin explained about the phone call, and Moto's eyes flashed with surprise. Well, I've never heard anything like that before. Have you spoken to the headmaster about all of this? He alone may have the answers. He is not... How could I say like other humans. Benjamin shook his head. He's gone to somewhere called the High Mountains on a consultation mission, and he's not back yet. 
Moto did his unique spinning nod again. Mm, he has gone to seek the dark man. Perhaps there is trouble brewing. If he has not returned, that bodes badly for all of us. Can you help me find him? Moto's jaw clacked. You propose something of great danger. The dark man commands all that is evil in End Infinium. The ghouls, and worse. This man may have done something to the Grand Lord. I did not say it was a man. I am unsure what, if anything, he really is. Perhaps he is no more than thought, but he commands all of the world's evil, and he seeks to claim End Infinium for himself. How? By destroying all that has been built, and polluting all that can't be destroyed. That's insane. It also makes no sense. Quite. It is no more than a story. No one I have ever met has ever seen the Dark Man, so his existence is believed by many to be no more than a myth. It is true that there are dark forces in End Infidium, and if the Grand Lord has travelled to the High Mountains, perhaps there is some truth to the rumours, after all. There is no doubt, though, that in recent weeks there has been a stirring. A stirring? Of dark reanimates, ghouls, and others, since you arrived. Benjamin gave a slow nod. So it seemed Wilhelm was right. Perhaps he had no choice in whatever destiny was being laid out before him. He rubbed his eyes. I didn't ask to be part of this. None of us did. But sometimes you can't ask the questions. You can only answer them. I need to find the Grand Lord. Maybe he can tell me why I'm here and what's happened to my brother. It's all connected. I'm sure of it. How can I find him? Moto's head wheel spun. You will put yourself in great danger. I cannot advise that this is a good choice. I don't care. How can I find him? You must follow him to the high mountains. Benjamin nodded. He didn't think he'd ever felt so afraid in his whole life. How do I get there? Moto's head spun again. You will find a way. Can you help me? This time... Moto's head spun back the way it had come, and his body shook from side to side as though caught in the grip of a sudden earthquake. Reanimates do not pick sides. This is your quest, Benjamin. In the seamless stone wall beside him, a door began to take shape. At first, just a pencil outline slowly sketching itself out before grooves and protrusions began to appear and finally it popped open to reveal a dark corridor. Good luck, Benjamin, Moto said, revving his engine for emphasis. And remember, you are welcome here any time. Before he realised what was happening, Benjamin stepped out into the corridor. He turned back, but the door was already disappearing, and within a few seconds the wall was featureless again. Not a single mark remained to indicate a door had ever been there. Hey! He turned. Miranda stood at the end of the corridor, and as she came running over, Benjamin saw her cheeks were flushed with exertion and a fire blazed in her eyes. I didn't think you were going to show. Boy, did you cause a stir up in the dining room. Everyone's looking for you. I went under the floor, Wilhelm said you might have. He said there's loads of stuff down there. People, too. Kind of. Miranda rolled her eyes. Why doesn't that surprise me? They started into a walk, heading towards the basements. Benjamin wasn't sure where they were going, but nervous energy was eating him up. He told Miranda what had happened and what Moto had said. But he, this motorbike thing, he wouldn't help you. Benjamin shook his head. After he told me what I needed to do, 
he seemed to change, like he was afraid that what I was proposing involved great danger. It's a stupid idea. You know that, don't you? What? Going to find the Grand Lord? Just wait for him to come back. What if he never does? What if this dark man guy has kidnapped him? Then what do you think you can do about it? Benjamin shrugged. I have no idea, but I can't just sit back and do nothing. He clenched his fists, refusing to cry in front of her. I'm a prisoner here. I get followed around. I get told that bad things are happening around me and that something has happened to my brother back home, yet I'm supposed to show up to stupid trigonometry class and act like I'm in a normal school. He stamped a foot. No, I'm done with all that rubbish. I want to know what's going on. He looked up at Miranda, who stared at him with a raised eyebrow. That was quite a tantrum, she said. I'd struggle to do better myself. I'm fed up with this place. Perhaps the dark man will kill me. I don't care. Perhaps if I die, I'll go back home. If it was that easy, no one would still be here, Miranda said. I really don't think you should try to get to the high mountains. It's like miles away, and you have to go through the haunted forest. That's where the cleaners come from, you know. People say the moaning of the dead wandering about is louder than the sound of the wind. I'll figure out how to get through there when I get to it. You're really planning to go, aren't you? Yes. Miranda put an arm around his shoulders. Well, you don't have to do it alone. It's safer that way. She smiled, then gave Benjamin a playful punch in the stomach that left him winded. We've been friends since literally before I was born. I'm not going to let you do something so dangerous on your own. Got that? Don't hit me so hard, Benjamin wheezed. But yeah, I got it. Thanks. But no way. I'm not letting you get involved in this. The ghouls are after me, not you. If the Grand Lord is the only one who might know why, then I'll find him, alone. I'm not putting you at risk. Too late. I packed my bag. I don't care. I do. Do you have any idea how hard it is to get to the high mountains? Do you? Miranda shook her head. No, but you can't just walk. It'll take forever. I thought of that, he said. Listen, if you really want to come with me, i leave at dawn. Meet me at the back entrance to the school. Near the gully, when the red sun passes in front of the other. Miranda glared at him. I'll be early, she said, so don't try to leave without me. Of course I won't. I need my security, don't I? But we'll need supplies too. Food, blankets, that kind of thing. I'll tell Wilhelm to pilfer what he can. Wilhelm's not coming. What? Look, this is my quest. I don't want to have to endanger anyone I don't have to. I can't make anyone fight my battles for me. If you say so. Only me and you, so don't be late. After telling Miranda what he wanted her to find, Benjamin made his excuses to leave, not looking back as he walked away. Guilt immediately weighed on him like a pendulum hanging from his neck. He had no intentions of letting anyone come, Miranda, Wilhelm, or otherwise. As he headed back toward the teacher's apartments, intending to collect his things and leave before anyone else got back from dinner, he wondered whether or not he was making the right decision. <laughs>